Well, hello, Lady Grove Park Primary School. I hope you're keeping well. I appreciate, I think this is the first time I've chatted to you for a while, so some of you may be looking at me and thinking, who on earth is this guy? Well, my name's Hugh. I'm the minister of the Lady Grove Church. We meet at the, um, well, in the school hall of All Saints School on a Sunday morning. And I get invited to come and chat with, with your good selves at an assembly about various things. So without further ado, I'm going to boot up a PowerPoint and show what I'm going to talk to you about today. I thought today we would look at the subject of signs. So when you think about it, signs are all over the place, aren't there? Some like this are pretty obvious. We see these sort of signs on the road and they tell us what to expect. This one, you probably know, is warning whoever's driving the car that the road surface is, is a little bit slippery. And therefore it's either telling you, don't go this way if you're not comfortable with slippery roads, or it is saying, please be careful. Maybe slow down a little bit and make sure you're paying attention to steering properly. And this road sign, I guess that's all it's there for, just to tell us about the surface of the road. But as you know, there's loads of road signs, aren't there? There's ones about telling you about roundabouts. I've got a road sign outside my house that tells the passerby what road they're actually walking in, just in case they're not aware, and which houses are actually behind that road sign. But there's more signs, and you know, while road signs clearly are purely signs, there's other forms of, of sign, I guess, that we, we just take for granted every day. How about this? Okay, we call it a clock, but it is a sign. It's telling us that at the moment, according to this clock, it's 20 to four. And it's also telling me something else. It tells me that whoever is using this uh, clock, as it's an alarm clock, He's hoping to get up at about half past five. I, hopefully in the morning, or maybe maybe that person works nights and they've had a sleep during the day and it's half past five in the afternoon. So yeah, we call it a clock, but it's really a sign, a sign of the time and a sign that says, this is when you need to wake up and get going. And then what about this one? Of course, this is a sign that's no longer there. Maybe some of you who maybe have only just recently moved into Didcot is going, well, where on earth is that? But that's Didcot Power Station a few years ago. And of course, <laughs> most people say, well, that's not a sign. But I know from talking to other people who have lived in Didcot for a while, they would say that when they were driving along the A34 or um, other roads nearby, as soon as they saw the power station and those huge chimneys, those cooling towers, should I say. It was a sign that they were on their almost home. Chance for someone's in the car to ring up and say, put the kettle on, we'd be another five minutes. So a power station and yet a sign, a sign to anybody who's passing by or driving around that area. And then of course, some signs that are up at the moment Christmas decorations. These ones are in the town centre. There's a lot of signs that it's Christmas, isn't it? People have put decorations inside their houses or outside their houses. You go in shops and if they're playing music, you can almost guarantee that it's going to be Christmas songs. There's lots of adverts on telly and on the uh, internet that talk about Christmas and special offers at shops and what have you, and special food that's available. My wife is in the other room watching uh, a, a, a Christmas DVD at this very moment. Lots of signs that it's Christmas or getting near to Christmas. And in fact, we even have a song about it, don't we? 
originally sung, I think, by Bing Crosby, but now I know Michael Bublé has sung it as well. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere we go. Signs that Christmas is coming. Before that first Christmas, there were signs that Christmas was coming. People just didn't realise it. But the Bible tells us that there were prophets, people who were regarded as sort of like messengers for God, that they would give messages to the people around them about things that were going to happen or sometimes a comment about what was happening at that time. And about 700 years ago, before, what I say 700 years, 700 years before that first Christmas, there were several prophets who started giving signs in the ways of written down scrolls and messages. They said quite a bit. They talked about Emmanuel, which means God with us, that someone was going to come who would be dis described as God with us. And that this person would be born in Bethlehem. And that this person would be a descendant of King David, who was the sort of best king that the Jewish people have ever had. That there would be somebody who would come before this, this special person, someone who would be almost like a messenger. And there was loads more prophecies messages from God spoken by prophets or written down by prophets talking about that first Christmas and that there would be a special person this person is often called well in the, in the Hebrew the, the language of the Old Testament the old part of the Bible he was called Messiah in the New Testament because they used Greek he was called Christ and so people had been waiting about 70, sorry, 700 years for the coming of someone really special. The only problem was they hadn't expected him to arrive as a baby, even though one of the prophecies talked about a young woman having a baby. They didn't put two and two together. I guess they were probably thinking that some mighty champion was going to come it was jesus according to the bible who was special and who would bring about change we call this time of year advent you may have an advent calendar at home an opportunity to count down to Christmas. You may have chocolates in your advent calendar, or you may have Lego. There's quite a few different things you can have in, in advent calendars these days. But the whole idea is that it is almost like a sign preparing you for Christmas Day. I want to show you what we have in church at this time as a way of counting down to Christmas. So, if you've been coming to school for a number of years, you may have seen me bring one of these in before. This is what we call an Advent wreath or an Advent crown. And as you can see, hopefully, it's got four red candles and one white candle in the middle. <laughs> and Rather than like a, an advent calendar that you might have at home that's got 24 little windows to open up, because we only meet on a Sunday, each of the four candles represents one of the Sundays before Christmas. So you may notice three of them are still intact. Well, this one here has been burnt a little because last Sunday, the 28th of November, was the first Sunday of Advent and so we lit this candle and the one in the middle we light on Christmas Day and when I say they are a countdown whoops <laughs> well, thank you well, they're a countdown for us to think about approaching Christmas they also are used to represent things they 
various churches might think about them in different ways but this year we're thinking about the first can candle representing hope and then peace and joy and love and as i say the fifth one the white one is our chance to think about jesus and so let's say we're thinking about hope this week and i guess when you think about the world today what with covid and with some of the fighting that's going on and we've been looking about climate change and how humanity has damaged the world and how some people seem to have lots and lots of money and have no problems while some of us are struggling the fact that we have more and more food banks in this country and of course the sad stories we've heard recently of people trying to cross the channel and some people dying it's very easy to sort of think well where on earth can we hope what what's so hopeful about the world around us and i guess the thing that sort of always strikes me is that first christmas as i say very few people worked out that jesus was this person who had been promised this great hope for the world because he was little baby it's very easy for us to look at ourselves and say well what can i do i'm very young i'm one person in this big wide world no one will listen to me hope comes in very small packages hope comes when maybe someone puts an arm around the shoulder of another and says it's okay I'll help you through this. I'll go with you wherever that you need to go and face something. I'll help you with that thing you're struggling with. So I thought I would finish with a prayer, a reflection. But before I do that, I thought just to help us get into the picture, I'm going to turn out the lights. So I thought we could light that candle once again here we go so alexa light that candle i really didn't know alexa could do that and you see just that one candle even on this camera you can see it's brightened up the darkness just to show that one little individual can offer hope can offer light in situations that are dark. So let's just have a little thought or a little prayer. So dear God, we thank you. We thank you for Christmas and this special time. We thank you for signs that tell us, ask us to be prepared, to be ready. And we thank you for those little signs of hope, those little offers of kindness, of a shoulder to cry on, of little words of encouragement. Help us as we prepare for Christmas to look for those opportunities where we, for, for where we can be signs of hope for other people. Amen. So thank you for listening and I hope you have, well, I'll probably see you before Christmas, but if not, well, have a good time. And just look for those opportunities to be bringers of hope, whether it be in actions or messages, who knows? And I'll see you again soon. God bless. <laughs>